Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk about the Argonautic. Now, amongst Devosa's lineup, I have to say the Argonautic BG is one of the most appealing. It has all the hallmarks of a modern dive watch. Sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, stainless steel chassis with a matching stainless steel bracelet. It even has a helium escape valve over at the 10 o'clock, similar to an Omega Seamaster. However, how well does it perform day to day? Now, if you're new to the channel, I like to start my reviews with the bad and then move on to the good before giving my final verdicts on a review item. So let's talk about the BG. So I have in the silver and gray variants of the Argo Nautic with orange accents. This happens to be my favorite of the model range. And it features a 42.5 millimeter width with a 51 millimeter lug to lug end distance. It's 13.5 millimeters thick and has 22 millimeter lug widths. Now beyond that sapphire crystal is Super Luminova BGW9. Perhaps that's where the BG comes from. They don't clearly state where that distinction comes from on their site, but I'm gonna assume that's what it is. And inside this case beats the hot of a Sleda SW200. Okay, the first thing I need to point out, and this is a major bad note in my opinion, this is a dive watch, correct? Where's the loom on the second hand? If someone was actually going to dive with this watch, it would be horribly dangerous to consciously jump into the deep blue without having loom on your second hand to note whether your watch is running or not at a glance. If you've ever wondered why dive watches feature huge loom plots at the end or counterbalance end of their seconds hand, it's so that you can tell immediately whether or not the watch is operating. Because if it's dark out or I'm in deep murky water, there is no way of knowing whether that seconds hand is running around the dial. I would have to rely on my minute hand, I guess, the minute movements of the minute hand. This isn't quite a dive watch. My next bad note is a minor one, but somehow with the date wheel, you'll notice that it's slightly left aligned. Now, this isn't with all of the dates, but when I get to, I'd say five, that is roughly when you'll notice the date wheel is slightly left aligned. It becomes more and more apparent as I go into the double digits. So while I'm cycling through here, you can see what I'm talking about and it's a little bit of a nuisance. I would like it if the date wheel rested in the center of that date window. Otherwise, I really love the execution, but as you can tell, it's just slightly left aligned. Now, while this isn't necessarily a bad note, it is a little bit of a nuisance when you see that negative space to the right of the date wheel. It'd be nice if it was squared off all the way through 1 and 31. Now, while it's nice that the Argonautic BG comes standard with a metal bracelet, I prefer the look of this shark mesh strap here, similar to that of the Argonautic Loomis series. The fitted end links of the stock metal strap protrude out of the case, extending the lines of the Argonautic, which is not something I necessarily like. And while the look is good on the watch, again, I just prefer the mesh option. I wish you could get the mesh option that comes with the Loomis stock standard on the BG. Also, another neat thing to note about this bracelet is that it does feature a dive extension. Although again, I don't see this as really a dive watch as it lacks loom on the seconds hand. It is nice to know that you could throw this over a wetsuit or your business suit should you choose with that extension on the fly. And I do like the four levels of micro adjustment on the clasp. It's a fine bracelet, just aesthetically, I don't think it works well for the watch. Now, aside from all those bad notes, there's actually a whole lot of good things to state. The bezel action on my copy of the Argonautic BG is fantastic. It's 120 click with just a little bit of back play. It's one of those bezels that you need to set um, going counterclockwise and just adjust by pushing it in the reverse. But when it does land on the mark, it is very deliberate and 
is lined up perfectly. There's no quality control issues here with the alignment of that ceramic insert. I love the execution of the case and overall detailing. It's just brush surfaces all around, complemented by these gorgeous gray tones and orange accents. Now, I haven't seen many divers go this color route, and I like it a whole lot. Anything with an ETA clone is bound to tell the time adequately enough, but Sleeta does an exceptional job of it. While I'd prefer an authentic ETA movement if I'm going Swiss, I haven't had any trouble with the Sleetas I've had in for review or those in my personal collection. If you want to go Swiss and check off that box, well, Salita is a good movement to go with. Now, before I give you my final verdict on this watch, I would love to provide you all with a wrist shot of this on the preferred metal bracelet. There are plenty of sock images if you want to see what this looks like on its supplied bracelet. Trust me, the mesh looks a lot better in person and in day-to-day -day use. I just hate how the lines extend on the end links of that stocked bracelet. Um, you guys, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that's a pet peeve of mine. But anyways, this is what the Argonautic BG looks like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist for all of your admirers. And when you are going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, and it looks pretty darned good on that mesh bracelet. And you'll notice that while we're taking this in, the dial is also slightly textured. I really like that. It reminds me of images of the moon's surface, uh, or similar to that of the Notice Contrail that was featured in my interview with the brand. It's a really good look for that tool watch aesthetic. At the roughly $800 asking price for this watch, it's proven to be a reliable tool watch for me in day-to-day -day use. However, I'm reluctant to say dive watch because it is missing a main feature of a dive watch, which is a loomed seconds hand. Davosa, please change the seconds hands on these model. You can keep the orange accented touch of that seconds hand. It looks great, but at least add a loom plot to either or end of that seconds hand. And I think you've really got something great on your hands. However, for now, you still have an extremely well-built watch with a unique aesthetic that will certainly appeal to those looking for a new tool watch. Now, if you found this video enlightening or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in picking up a Davosa watch, particularly one from their Argonaut series, as they have a whole range of homage pieces uh, up to uh, original designs like this one. Feel free to share this video with them. I think the Argonautic series is awesome. I'd love to see different case sizes. I think this works well for most wrists. It works well on mine at least. Uh, it would be cool to see a 39 millimeter version instead for those who have a slightly smaller wrist than me and perhaps different options for the bracelet instead. I would prefer the Milanese that comes on the Luma series. As a matter of fact, the Luma series is very attractive as well. Uh, feel free to share this video with them to get another consumer's opinion on the item. And if you're new to the channel, well, welcome. I do videos like this two or more times a week. So if watch content is your thing, feel free to hit the subscribe button. It lets me know that you are down for the show. And if you'd like to see my videos precisely when they air, you can hit the bell icon just next to that. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time.